What if I told you OpenAI just released an open source AI system so smart it runs multiple AI agents working together? And you can run it yourself at home. But here's the kicker. A new study says ChatGPT might be hurting our brains. Yeah, that's a lot to unpack. Let's dive in. Today we're exploring OpenAI's groundbreaking multi-agent customer service demo. It's open source and shows how AI bots can team up in real time. We'll also peek behind the curtain at some major industry drama. OpenAI ending its partnership with Scale AI after Meta snapped up half of that company. Plus, Midjourney's first video model has arrived, but big studios are suing. And YouTube is doubling down on AI-powered shorts with a brand new Google video model. Lastly, an eye-opening MIT study raises concerns about how using ChatGPT might be affecting our creativity and memory. OpenAI's multi-agent customer service demo. What is it? Imagine you're booking a flight. Instead of one AI answering every question, what if there was a team of AI specialists? One for seat changes, another for cancellations, one for baggage questions, and so on. All working together seamlessly? That's exactly what OpenAI's new CS Agents demo shows. It's a full airline customer service system mock-up, and you can run it locally on your computer. How does it work? The backend is written in Python using Uvicorn to run the server. The front end is built with Next.js and gives you a clean chat interface. But the real magic is the live trace that visually highlights which AI agent is talking or acting at every moment. For example, if you type, can I switch to an aisle seat on flight 347? Here's what happens. The triage agent first understands your request and figures out who should handle it. It passes the task to the seat booking agent. That agent pulls up a seat map and confirms the change. Other agents handle cancellations, flight status, with real-time updates, FAQs about baggage or aircraft types, and more. Why does this matter? Traditional AI chatbots try to be everything at once, but that can lead to mistakes, slow responses, or confusion. By breaking the job down into specialized agents, each AI handles what it knows best, improving accuracy and efficiency. Think of it like a real call center. A team of experts focused on their own tasks, collaborating behind the scenes. Safeguards and guardrails. Of course, AI systems can go off track or get hacked. So OpenAI included two guardrails. Relevance guardrail. It stops the AI from responding to nonsense or off-topic questions. Jailbreak guardrail. It prevents users from accessing or manipulating the AI's internal instructions or systems. If something goes wrong, Errors appear clearly in the live trace, so developers can pinpoint exactly where and why the conversation stopped. Open source and customizable. Because it's open source, you can add your own agents, change how tasks are routed, or beef up the guardrails, all without rewriting the whole system. OpenAI essentially shared their internal blueprint, including how they design agents, prompt templates, tool wrappers, handoff rules, output formats, and a tracing system that makes debugging much easier. This is huge for AI developers and enthusiasts. It's a transparent look at how complex multi-agent systems work in practice. How to run it yourself. To try this at home, you start the back-end server and then run npm run dev on the front end. In minutes, you have a working airline customer service bot that's modular and transparent. Perfect for learning how multi-agent AI works without relying on one huge monolithic prompt. OpenEyes moved to DropScale AI partnership. While the demo was quietly released, something big happened behind the scenes. OpenAI announced its ending contracts with Scale AI, a company that helps label data used to train AI models. Why? Meta just bought 49% of Scale AI for $14.8 billion, their second biggest acquisition ever. Scale's CEO, Alexander Wang, is moving over to work on Meta's AI projects, so OpenAI. I wants to avoid sending training data through a vendor partly owned by its biggest competitor. What does this mean for the AI industry? OpenAI said the scale only handled a small part of their data pipeline anyway, and they're switching to newer providers like Mercor. Google is reportedly doing the same, fearing Meta might gain insights into their models through scale. Scale insists it's still independent. But with Meta owning half the company, that independence feels shaky. The shift in AI data labeling workforce Scale used to depend on thousands of contract workers labeling simple data. Now, as models get smarter, Scale employs specialized annotators for complex tasks. These skilled annotators are exactly the talent OpenAI and Google need for training next-gen models. 
fueling a fierce competition over people, not just data. Midjourney's foray into video AI and the lawsuits. Midjourney just launched its first image to video model. You give it a single frame, a photo or AI generated image, and it produces four different five second clips inspired by that image. What does it look like? The videos have Midjourney's trademark dreamy, surreal vibe. Not photorealistic, but totally captivating. Currently, the model runs only inside Discord. No standalone app yet. Video generation uses credits at eight times the rate of image creation, so it can get pricey on lower tier plans. Features and future plans. You can extend videos up to 21 seconds and choose low or high motion, random animation, or input your own movement instructions. CEO David Hall says this is version one. They aim to build real-time, open-world simulations like a dreaming Unreal Engine, 3D models, and fully generative worlds. The Legal Firestorm Disney and Universal filed lawsuits just a week before the launch. They claim Mid-Journey's A, I, can create copyrighted characters like Homer Simpson or Darth Vader on demand. Despite this, early users love the new tools, though they aren't quite on par with OpenAI's Sora or Runway's Generation 4 yet. YouTube and Google's AI video rollout. At the Cannes Festival, YouTube announced it's rolling out Google's new V3 video model to shorts this summer. Some creators have used V2 since February, but now the upgrade is going mainstream. Expect floods of AI-generated short clips, skateboarding robots, sci-fi, and more. YouTube's massive growth numbers. YouTube CEO Neil Mohan shared staggering stats. Shorts get over 200 billion daily views, up from 70 billion in March 2024. Connected TVs stream 1 billion hours daily on YouTube. Over half the top 100 channels get most views from couch audiences on TVs. YouTube podcasts have over a billion monthly listeners. 20 million videos use auto-dubbing to reach global audiences. Shorts, booming, but long form is alive and well. YouTube's 20th birthday report shows short videos are growing fast. But longer content, Documentaries, podcasts, is also surging, mostly on big screens. For creators, the takeaway. Optimize for phones to reach wide audiences. Optimize for TVs to keep viewers watching longer. MIT study. Does ChatGPT hurt our brains? Here's where things get really interesting. MIT researchers ran an experiment with 54 volunteers aged 18 to 39. They split them into three groups, writing SAT-style essays on topics like philanthropy ethics and choice overload. One group wrote essays unaided. One could freely Google. One used chat GPT. Everyone wore EEG caps measuring brain activity linked to creativity and memory. What did they find? The chat GPT group showed the lowest brain engagement in EEG bands tied to creativity and memory. Two English teachers called their essays soulless with very similar wording across different writers. By ESA 3, many ChatGPT users copied the prompt wholesale, changed a sentence or two, and submitted it. What about the other groups? The brain-only group had much higher brain activity and felt more satisfied. They experienced real ownership of their work. The Google group fell in between. Active searching sparked cognitive planning, unlike letting AI do all the writing. A surprising twist. After the first round, ChatGPT users had to rewrite an essay without AI help. They struggled to recall their original writing. The brain-only group, when allowed to use ChatGPT later, performed better. The EEG showed ChatGPT essays weren't deeply stored in memory. Best practices from the study. Volunteers who wrote essays by hand, first then edited with ChatGPT, showed increased brain connectivity. This suggests a mix of human effort plus AI assistance might be ideal. Why this study matters. Lead author Natalia Kozmina fast-tracked publication because peer review can take eight months. She warns policymakers, don't rush AI tools into education without full understanding. She even planted errors in the paper so AI summarizers would generate false info, showing AI's risks in spreading misinformation. What's next? The team's programming study shows similar brain declines when coders rely heavily on AI autocomplete. It's early days. But it aligns with other research saying AI boosts short-term productivity, but may hurt intrinsic motivation. Wrap up. What does this all mean? OpenAI's multi-agent demo shows the future of modular AI systems. Smarter, customizable, and transparent. Meanwhile, 
Corporate drama with scale AI and Meta reveals the fierce competition behind AI training. Midjourney pushes creative AI into video, but faces lawsuits from big studios. YouTube's AI video tools are exploding in popularity. But the MIT study reminds us, relying too much on AI like ChatGPT might come at a real cost to creativity and memory. If you enjoyed this deep dive, please hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more AI updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. See you in